Hello everyone, welcome to Switch Up. My name is Glenn and today we have a review for you of the Alliance Alive HD. Written for us by a very good friend of the channel, Jace Glover, so thank you very much Jace. The Alliance Alive was originally released on the 3DS in the summer of 2017, right around the time when the Switch was gaining in popularity and the 3DS was nearing the end of its run. The game released to mediocre sales numbers but is being given a second chance with the HD remaster treatment on current gen consoles that so many RPGs have been getting as of late. With the Switch very quickly becoming a premier JRPG powerhouse, does the Alliance Alive HD remastered stand a chance? Well thank you to NIS America for the review copy and now let's find out. The story in The Alliance Alive is a simple one. Centuries ago, demons descended on the planet and split it into five realms, each surrounded by an impassable energy field called the Dark Current. Humans have since become the low class citizens, with beast folk representing the middle class allowed to live alongside the humans and given dominion over them. The demons, meanwhile, have returned to their realm, but maintain a firm grip over humanity from afar. The first 10 hours or so of the game hop between multiple groups of characters. One is a pair of humans who are members of a resistance aimed at bringing down the demons from their lofty heights. The second set of characters you meet are a demon princess who is fascinated with studying humans up close, her loyal butler, and a human who has spent her life studying the dark current. The third group is a human who tries to gain favour from the demons by undertaking tasks for them, and a hunter who likes adventure and the odd job. The beginning of the story sees you play in the same moment in time but from the perspective of the different groups until they ultimately meet together and open up the rest of the tale. What the game does well is continue the main plot at a brisk pace, never settling in one area for too long and continuously giving you a new goal to advance the story. Unfortunately this does come at a cost of character development. Some of the nine main characters get almost no backstory or screen time at all and are so thinly developed that you wonder why they're even there. All the characters suffer from this though, and consequently I felt little connection or care for any of them, and since the game is more plot driven than anything else, obviously this was quite a concern. In terms of gameplay, The Alliance Alive follows the classic JRPG formula regarding world exploration. You will move your characters through an overworld map until you reach a city or a dungeon, and then proceed inside to explore. The game moves away from random encounters and shows enemies instead as grey shapes on the map. Running into one of these will start a battle, and if any are grouped together on the map, then a chain battle will start instead. Battles are turn-based, where the player decides on a move from each character in the party, at which point both parties will attack each other, and if necessary, another round will begin. At the end of each battle, all HP points are fully restored, unless the character fainted during battle, in which case their maximum HP will be lowered slightly, until the player rests at an inn. The combat system itself on the face of it is pretty complex, and looks much deeper than a simple turn-based affair. Each party can have up to five characters, each taking a space in one of three lines in a formation. Whether the characters are in the front, middle or back line will dictate how effective various actions are and which additional bonuses will be applied. For instance, a character in the front line is more likely to be attacked by the enemy. Adding further complexity, each character can be either an attacker, support or guardian. Attackers gain additional attack power, supporters gain additional healing and guardians gain defence but deliver weaker attacks. The game allows you to pick from a handful of set formations, but as far as I could tell you cannot customise them aside from picking which character sits in which spot. Now as previously stated, this is quite complex, but the issue is that it doesn't seem to matter very much in the heat of battle. 95% of all battles are against enemies so weak that the formation stances you choose or even which attacks you choose are mostly irrelevant. Only boss battles take any amount of fault and even these proved to be quite easy. The only challenge the game provided me was by occasionally offering optional battles with stronger enemies but often these ended up being way overpowered and unbeatable, the complete polar opposite from the rest of the enemies in the game, and it was this difficulty balancing that's the main issue. The Alliance Alive HD presents you with an auto battle system should you wish to use it, which will automatically choose the most recently selected action for each character until either the player cancels the auto battle or the battle ends. Additionally, the developers chose to add the ability to speed up the combat by 2 or 4 times normal speed, which aids in any grinding between plot points. 
Again, due to the unbalanced nature of the difficulty, which as I said for the most part is way too easy, I found myself just speeding through battles just to advance the story. There are additional systems in play that serve as character progression. Characters do not gain experience and level up in the traditional sense, but instead gain stats randomly at the end of battles. Characters will also randomly unlock new abilities in battle just by using any of the number of weapons. Each character can equip any weapon, but they will each start with proficiency in one or two of them, and the game system gives little incentive to stray from these two starting weapon types, as the character would start from scratch with any new weapon. There are also talent points that are earned at the end of battles, and can be used to further proficiency with weapons, but these are provided in incredibly meagre amounts, and unlocking a single talent could require hundreds of battles, making them fairly redundant unless the player wants to grind for a long time. Outside of combat and advancing the story, there are guilds that you can recruit new characters to. Each guild specialises in different things, such as the Blacksmith Guild, which will make you new weapons and armour, or the Signomancy Guild, which focuses on developing new spells. Recruiting more characters to these guilds will increase their strength, influence and offerings to the player, and served as an intriguing side distraction from the main plot. Annoyingly though, the ability to recruit is not unlocked until you've reached a point in the game where the three separate groups come together, which is roughly a third of the way through. In regards to the controls, they are fairly standard outside of battle, and navigating the menus is simple. Where the controls do falter though is trying to look into more detailed information during combat or while browsing items on the menu. By default, you won't see anything in the item menu except the item name, and you then have to press X to see more information. In combat, various buttons provide all kinds of information, such as X showing more detail on each ability, while ZL shows you the enemy formation. I found it much too easy to click the wrong button, as it was just a little bit messy and overcomplicated, but the good news is that the controls are always on the screen, to be fair. Overall, the gameplay is marred by a level of complexity that doesn't seem to be matched by the game's difficulty, and scores 13 out of 20. Meanwhile, controls are okay for the most part, but a little overcomplicated during battles, and they score 14 out of 20. The visuals in Alliance Alive are definitely the strongest aspects of the game. Each of the main characters is well designed and unique. It's safe to say that the characters have a lot more personality visually than they are given via the story. The five different realms all look distinct, and each realm also has its own design aesthetic in the towns and dungeons. Seeing as the game originated on the 3DS, the HD remaster has greatly improved the original graphics, but it still looks better on the handheld as opposed to the big screen. It doesn't look bad when docked, by any means, but does look a little more washed out. One negative about the visuals would be the enemy design. Boss battles are usually against unique enemies, but the vast amount of battles in between will be against the same small handful of enemies, each recolored and reused for the various different realms. I'm happy to report the performance is flawless in both docked and handheld mode with short loading screens overall. The audio on the other hand is nowhere near as strong. The soundtrack is fine and I appreciate the use of different song titles and instruments to help further differentiate the different regions in the game. Unfortunately none of it is memorable, sound effects are minimal and extremely weak, all the attacks sound the same and there are some particularly annoying death sounds that some of the enemies make a problem which is only exacerbated by the fact that I was often playing at four times the speed. Another major drawback is the absence of any voice acting whatsoever. I've played plenty of RPGs in the past that do not include voice acting, but usually this is replaced by grandiose emotional musical tracks that help drive the feeling behind the moment. The scenes here just continue to play the same tracks you've been hearing on the overworld, and this combination meant that all of the cutscenes and major story segments just felt a little bit flat. Visuals are strong and score 17 out of 20, but unfortunately the audio cannot match this and scores 10 out of 20. The Alliance Alive HD Remastered will cost you £49.99, €49.99 or $49.99, which in my opinion is just way too much. This does seem to be a bit of a pattern with NIS America releases, and they do also seem to give little consideration for exchange rates too. To be fair, there is about 25 hours worth of story here, and this number could potentially double if you want to explore everywhere and find everything, but for a re-released 3DS title, with some minor improvements but not many, this is a very hefty price, and I would recommend waiting for a discount. Value scores 10 out of 20. 
To conclude, the Alliance Alive HD Remastered continues the trend of NIS America games that get me excited by an intriguing trailer and seemingly deep mechanics, but ultimately just fall a bit short of my expectations. Whilst the overall story is decent, the individual characters are hard to connect with, and as I mentioned earlier, what is quite an interesting and complex battle mechanic system is let down by battles that are so easy most of the time that you really don't need to use the deep mechanics presented to you. The Alliance Alive HD Remastered gets a switch up score of 64%. A big thank you to Jace as always for writing this review for us. I think he does a very good job of explaining exactly where the game does well and where it falls down as well. So thank you once again, Jace. A quick thank you as always to all of our patrons for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our channel. Take care and until next time, happy gaming.